Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. The MiG 29A Fulcrum has just come out in high fidelity in DCS and the first thing we need to do is to set our controls up and that's what we're going to do today. Two big caveats. First caveat, we've been doing this for about 10 years and this is almost certainly the most difficult aircraft we've found to set the controls up on. We think we've got about 99% right but this is very much a first pass. We apologise if we've made any errors. Second caveat, this is early access in the next 12 months onwards is very likely that the aircraft is going to be changed and the names of the controls will probably change as well. I'll try and do a renewed video when that happens but it simply may not be viable for me to do that. If that happens then you'll have to use your own interpretation to try and work out what they've changed the controls to. Okay so options from main menu. Controls. Select over here our MiG-29 Fulcrum just in case this is your first plane, it's probably not, but you have categories here where you can go into the categories and isolate the controls you want to change, okay? The first thing I'm going to do is go to Axis Commands, which is pretty simple. Action, the category that action is in. Keyboard Association, Joystick Association for me, Throttle Association for me, Pedals if you've got pedals, and uh, Miscellaneous there. First, we're going to set our pitch. Obviously, it's going to be our stick forward and back and our roll left and right. And it's up to you if you want to go and put on that an axis tune and add a bit of positive curve, which will kind of dampen down the smaller bits of movement. Next, rudder is obviously my rudder pedals, rudder bar left and right. And I would definitely suggest that you put a sizable positive curve on that because it's very sensitive. Again, it will dampen down the smaller movements. Next, in terms of axis, obviously thrust left, thrust right if you have two thrust levers, which I do. I personally don't put curves on them, so I'm going to leave that there. Next, wheel brake. You can either have it as a button or you can have it as an axis. I would suggest an axis if you can, and I've put it as one of my toe brakes. It's quite often that you set it and it will be the wrong way round and your plane won't move, so you will need to go to axis tune and invert. If that is the case, you may not. I did. Finally, if you're not in VR, zoom view is a great axis to have. I've put it on just a little wheel on my throttle and that will allow me to zoom in and zoom out. So that's the axis done for me anyway. You may want to add more, you may not. I'm going to do it how I do it. What you're going to really garner from this is which controls you need to bind to be able to fly. Okay, so I'm going to go down category and because I'm all back to front, I go down to the bottom first. I go to weapon control panel. Things I think you need to bind are going to be WCS mode selector knob. You've got a whole bunch of selections and as standard at the time of making this video, the various selections have numbers on the keyboard associated with them. So if you press 1, it will go to nav. If you press 7, it will go to optical, uh, radar and so on. Or what I've done is set cycle clockwise and counterclockwise because it's a knob to cycle through those options and then I've gone and set that on my joystick as a kind of left and right selector so I can cycle through or you can literally press the knob with the mouse in your cockpit it's up to you zone switch will be very important for using the radar it'll allow us to slew the radar left slew the radar right so I have put them on my keyboard because my radar controls you usually have so many I put them on the keyboard in my usual keyboard configuration left right and centralize or you could have cycle left and right but I suggest just having left right and center Next, we're going to go to view. You might want to do as well. I'm just going to show you what I've done. View, in slow, view, out slow. Next, we're going to go to trim control. It's pretty obvious. You want to trim back, up, left and right. And if you want to remove any trim set, you've got it there. And I've got it on a kind of four-way pressable hat on the top of my joystick. I personally don't do rudder trim in jet-powered planes. Next, we go to throttle. This aircraft in real life has a latch which prevents you from going into afterburner by accident and you can add them here. As standard, the aircraft is set at the time of making this video so you don't need to do that. So I don't actually need to do that. If you want to change that, go into your main menu, special options, MiG-29 and you can add that back on if you want. What I do want is obviously flare dispense button sends out a flare or a program of flares and uh, I've set that to where I would normally have it on my throttle idle latch similar to the afterburner latch that we talked about but i don't think you're going to need it next you've got lock on slash nose wheel steering button and i set that where i always have it on my nose wheel steering on my joystick 
Manual ranging control, we're still trying to figure this one out. It's uh, turned out to be a bit more complex than we thought, this radar. I am setting it where I would normally have radar ranging on my keypad. We haven't fully worked out what it does yet, but we'll figure it out. I think you're probably going to need it. Speed brake modal, so it's on or it's off. And we've got it set there. Reminder, speed brake, you can't always deploy. If you've got your landing gear out, you can't deploy it. If you've got a fuel tank on, you can't deploy it. So just bear that in mind. Uh, next, we're going to go to stick, if you can see it. There it is. Uh, this one seems quite useful. AP cutout lever. If you want to disable your autopilot to have manual control of your aircraft, which you may want to do, I've just put it on the keyboard for now. Maybe I'll put that on my stick later. I haven't decided. Um, in case you don't have a axis for your brake, you can also have it as a button here. Uh, brake lock obviously does what it says, and I've set that to a relevant button on my throttle. Next one of relevance, we're going to have obviously gun trigger. You're going to want your first and second detent do different things. And for me, I have a two stage trigger. If you don't have a two stage trigger, then find another way around it. Find another button for first detent, but you will need it. Missile trigger obviously does what it says and set that to my normal weapon release slash missile button on my stick. Uh, next, uh, stick visibility is a real useful one to, to have. It's bound a standard as that allows you to hide the kind of 3D stick. Target acquisition would be, I guess you would call it the equivalent of a target designating cursor on a NATO plane. Up, down, left and right and depress. I've got it on a kind of four-way hat where I would usually have it on my stick with a depress function. Trim, we've already been over. Some commands will be repeated on various um, kind of panes or categories here. That may change, it may not, we'll see. Next thing of interest to us viewers is going to be radar control panel. Things we think we need, not to use, but that we're going to need quick access to on our HOTAS. Radar elevation. If we want to pan the radar up or down in terms of elevation, obviously, I put it where I would normally have it on my numpad. Um, radar illumination uh, switch. I think of it as a kind of master mode for the radar. Do I want it off? Do I want it standby? Do I want it on? You're not going to need it for your, uh, on your HOTAS, I doubt. Radar mode select knob. You definitely will need it on your HOTAS. How are we going to use it? Long range, head on, close combat, automatic. There are four selections that you can have, which you can bind them individually, or because it's a knob, you can bind clockwise and counterclockwise, which is what I've done currently on my joystick. I may decide that's too fiddly, and I may want to go to bind all four options later on. I haven't decided yet. Finally, pulse repetition frequency. Are we looking for targets coming towards us or going away from us? It's an old radar and you'll need to use this if you want to have any luck with it. And I've bound that just to a button on my numpad where I would usually have it. Guys, let's move on. And this one, the aptly named PU Sierra 3-1 panel. So, yeah, sexy. We've researched these. The things we think you're actually going to need on a basis quite a lot. Air to ground. Dealing with the weapons control system. Is it going to want to be air to air, air to ground? Uh, deployments. I've just set it to the toggle here that toggles between them. You may want to set them there. All of the switches, you can go and press in the plane, but some of them are awkward to get to, and therefore I suggest putting on your HOTAS. This guy here has dual functions, um, but I haven't considered it important enough to have on your HOTAS. Finally, this one here, weapons control system lock switch. What this does is tells the system, do you want to lock enemies or friends? Sounds stupid, but that's actually quite useful. Locking a friend or an enemy um, or changing between the ability, I think it's going to be useful. So I've just set it as the space button until I find, as a placeholder, until I find a better button for it. I think you're going to probably want to use that, especially in DCS. Let's move on. Left wall, external store switch, uh, the outbound most pylons, or the inboard most pylons, um, and I've set them as a couple of easy to get to switches on my joystick. Um, what do we got next? It's going to be general so if we find general you got loads more stuff but most of it we just don't need in our view so go general there you can turn your monocle your eyepiece whatever you want to call it helmet mounted display on or off and i suggest just having toggle there next flight control it's got um ones from our throttle and from our stick but it has a really important one i want to point out if we want to override the augmented flight control system to give us full control of the aircraft's elevators a bit like you have in the hornet with the paddle switch you have this here stick deflection limiter override note we suggest that that probably will be removed at some point this syntax here and it will probably go back to being this one here on the stick AFCS mode off button depress. We get the feeling that does the same thing and that's probably what it's gonna become. Next, 
we're going to go to assist. It's just super useful if you're an actual human and don't want to have to start this thing manu manually every time go to assist. If you go into a multiplayer server, you need to start it up. You don't have time. Assist, auto start and auto stop. Bind that and you can quickly start the plane up. Finally, AFC, yes, I just wanted to point this out. Obviously, the augmented flight control system, there's various buttons you can do to do various things. You can push the buttons. They're relatively easy to see in the cockpit on the left, or you can come here and bind them. Uh, use those binds or bind them to your HOTAS. And that's it as we have it at the moment. Obviously, we haven't mastered this plane, but those are the controls we think we need for the moment. I uh, hope that was useful, viewers, and bye-bye.